Hi guys, this is Steven uh, with Team Covenant. We're here again at the Infinity booth with uh, Brian Ramey. Brian, how's it going, man? I'm doing very good. Now, you run a YouTube channel dedicated to Infinity, as I understand. Very right, much at so. At least right now. Yes. So, uh, we're putting up a link to you here in this video, and I want you to give me the best Infinity demo that I've ever received in my life. Well, I've never I will do my one best before. for a demo under 50 points, the best you've ever Perfect. had. Perfect. Okay. I just need to know how do I kill stuff, how do I attack, how do, you know, how do I play this game in the very basic sense. Okay, so this demo centers around one of the biggest rivalries in Infinity, the Aleph, the artificial intelligence versus the nomad nation of Corregidor, okay? Okay, so and, what's the conflict here? Uh, right, so AI, uh, the Aleph uh, faction is an artificially intelligent faction, and the nomads in general are basically screaming at the top of lungs all the time, going, we can't let them become sentient, they'll take over everything. Okay. So it's just, I mean, it, it's almost, it, in a little bit of a sense, you get that whole Terminator vibe between the two, the freedom fighters versus the Sweet. artificial intelligence, Sweet. right? Okay, so in Infinity, there's only three things you really need to know to start playing Infinity. All right. Okay, the first thing is the types of dice rolls. First type of dice roll is considered a normal roll, and it's more or less a skill check. Let's say I wanted this model to climb this wall. Okay, okay? solid. I would take the pH value of the model, Okay. and I need to roll that or less. Ironically, this is the point in which the demo becomes interactive, so I'm going to require you to roll the die. All right, so this guy's trying to climb this wall. Yes. All right, now uh, how do I know how, how far this guy can climb? It is ah, one it. half of your movement, so since it's a two-inch wall, and you nailed that climb? I just nailed that roll. Boom. He's up the wall. He's up there. And I can put him basically anywhere where his base will fully fit on top of that. That's that's next to the edge that yes. I climbed up. Okay, yes. solid. Okay. So the next thing, the next type of roll that we're gonna talk about is a face-to-face -face roll. So in this case, without going into much detail about how this necessarily happened, they're firing at one another. Sure. In sure. infinity, because there is never a time where you're really taking turns, you're always playing. This model is reacting to the fact that this model is fired or has moved into its line of sight and firing. Sure. Okay? Yeah. So in this case, to determine, since the Nomad Nation is going as the active player, we're going to take his ballistic skill, which is a 13. Okay. He's uh, how good he is with a gun. Right. Yeah. We will now consider the distance modifier, which you measure center base to center base, so less than seven inches. From zero to eight inches on that particular weapon, it's a plus three. He's firing a combi rifle. All right. So now instead of a 13, I need a 16. That's However, easy. However, this model... Is the, trying to kill me. Well, no. It has a mimetism, <laughs> a special sort of oh, camouflage, no. which subtracts three. Most modifiers are multiples of three in Infinity, so most more often than not, you'll get into a lot of situations where I have a positive, I have a negative modifier, they're both three, so it cancels out. Cancel out. Exactly, so in this case, he's rolling 13s or less. Since he is in his active turn, you look at the burst rating of the weapon he's firing, which is three, so you get to roll three dice. All right. Okay. You're rolling three dice, looking for 13 or less. Give me just one second. <laughs> I wanted to do it, <laughs> I know, I know you do. This model is rolling at 11. Again, he's using the same combi rifle, so at seven inches, he's getting a plus three. So for him, it's a 14, but you have no camouflage, so it stops at 14. Okay. Since it's reacting, I only fire once instead of my normal burst. Okay, so the attacker still has a bit of an advantage because Absolutely. the burst is higher. So odds are that I'm going to probably succeed on these more than you're going to. Uh... There's an outstanding chance that that's the case. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Okay, so for instance, in this case, I rolled epically, or failed epically on my roll, by rolling a 16, which is above the 14. You did a 14, so nothing. You, on the other hand, rolled a 3, 12, and, uh, a 3, 12, and 17. Your 17 is above your 13, but you would have successfully hit me twice. So two successes. Let me, let me change the value around a little bit and actually say it's an 8. In this case, for a face-to-face -face roll, the 8 is greater than a 3, so it cancels it out. The 12 is greater than an 8, so it cancels it out, and I get hit once. In a face-to-face awesome. -face roll, you get at a maximum one person doing being successful. I say maximum because both of us could have rolled nothing but 20s, in which case neither of us did anything, right? Yeah, yeah okay. sure. Now, on the rare occasion where we both roll the same value, it's not necessarily a tie. I needed a 14 or less, you needed a 13 or less. So I had a greater chance of succeeding from the get-go. My 12 is better than your 12, in nice. which case you take a... a, a potential wound okay, okay. Uh, you were hit once so what if we both needed the same number and we both rolled the uh, we both needed 13s and we both rolled 12s 
in that case, nothing would happen. Okay, so it cancel each other out. We because were both remember, too good. Maximum one successful person. Okay, solid, right? solid, nice. The only time that the the tie doesn't work is when we both roll thirteen, and the reason is you needed a thirteen. So in this chant, in this instance, you rolled a critical hit. I get no armor save. I automatically take one wound. Nice. Based on the based on the fact that it's normal ammunition. Nice. Okay. All right. Let's go back and pretend for a second, though, that we both rolled 11s. My 11 was better than your 11, and you're taking the armor set, because that's the third type of roll. Okay, so I took a bullet. I got hit here. You, you took a bullet, All and right. you got hit. This okay? is not good. No. So you look at the damage of the weapon being fired. In this okay. case, it's a 13. You then subtract the armor value, because it's normal ammunition, from the 13, so it's an 11. Except this roll, you have to exceed. Normal face to face, it's that number or less. Armor saves are greater than. So right. you need one. You need to save once. So you need to roll an roll. eleven or higher or a twelve. No, twelve or, or higher because it must exceed. I must exceed. All right. So damage thirteen minus two for armor gives me the value of eleven. Right. And now I need to exceed that value. So I need a twelve or higher. But that's no problem. Uh, or it is. <laughs> So you rolled a two, you take a wound. And in Infinity, while you're at positive wounds, you're alive. At zero, you're unconscious or incapacitated. Yeah. Negative, you're dead. You're dead. Okay. okay. Solid. Um, you'll notice that your has wounds, mine has structures. That's because I need an engineer to fix me. You need a doctor or a guy with a med kit to I'm fix you. I'm flesh and you're just mechanical, artificial yeah. intelligence. I need, I need an extra bolt. Okay. Solid. Yeah. Okay. So the... We've already talked about now the three different types of dice rolls. That's normal, face-to-face, -face, and armor, armor save. Yeah. First two, remember, at or less, armor save is greater. Let's talk about the second thing you need to know about Infinity. That is how to generate orders and how to spend orders. Okay, okay? solid. We're going to make the assumption that in this demo, that our lieutenants are behind me somewhere on the board and they're alive. Okay? Okay. If your lieutenant is alive, you look at how many models are giving you regular orders. Okay. That's this symbol. And for... As long as you have that many those orders, you can spend them however you want. So, so this is a thing that, ha like, at the start of my turn, I look at all the yes. things that are alive that generate orders, and I get all those orders. Yes, as long as your lieutenant is alive. Okay, solid. So, since your lieutenant is alive, you can eventually you'll you'll start spending the orders. You don't have to pre-allocate them, but you'll start spending the orders. You can spend them all on this one model. Or you can put one on each, or you can do okay. two and one. So, I mean, it's so I could have this guy just go on a crazy mission, and these guys are staying put the whole he time. He could be your Commando Jones, <laughs> dashing down the field in full speed, blowing things away as he's right, going. Right, it's As cinematic as you can make it. Right, solid. And because I don't pre-allocate, like if he goes out here for his moment of glory and he gets I shot down, then it's like, well, I'll try with these guys. Now. Exactly. Okay, solid. Right. Okay, so. Now we've talked about dice rolls, we've talked about orders and how you spend them. The next thing you need to know is how do you change an order into something that's useful on sure. the battlefield, right? Yes. So for an order, you can translate into one long skill or two short skills, okay? okay. Solid. And be, though it's beyond the scope of the demo, a long skill might be laying down suppressive fire. Sure. Right? Or, for instance, in this case, <clears throat> if I have a model that's trying to bridge, walk across a gap, but I don't want to take a shot from an opposing model, yeah. I could declare a cautious move, mm. in which case instead of moving both of these numbers, I'm only moving the first of my movement scale. And as long as I start and complete in total cover, out of line of sight, this model cannot declare any shots. Fantastic. So I'm sneaking through, uh, basically sneaking around yeah, you're being stealthy and they and can't see me. Yeah, okay, solid. Okay. Um, so those are the those are two examples of long skills. But again, most of the time, you can't do two non-movement short skills. Okay. okay. So I can climb and move. I can move and move. I can go drop prone, stand up, back up. All these kinds of things, they're all movement-based. But yeah. I can't fire twice. Okay. I can move and fire, but I can't fire twice. Okay, solid. Now, so, just, just a quick question, because I'm curious. So you know miniatures games, right? You use tape measures. Absolutely. And there's always this thing that's like, so if I'm eyeing this and I say I'm going to make a cautious movement and I don't quite make it, I've made the mistake, right? So you my opponent gets mistake. to take the shoot. There okay. is no pre-measuring in this okay. game. Solid. You have to declare your intention before you even break the tape measure out. Awesome. All right. Solid, solid. Okay. So what 
what? So I've turned orders into things that I can do. Right. So That's sh- all you need to know. Sure, Everything else about Infinity is how you come onto the board or things that apply different modifiers. So show me how all of this is going to come together to make like a, a nice a nice game here. A, a move, shoot. Uh, show me all these orders and how they're going to interact. Okay. So we're actually going to I'm going to lay down everything and we're going to pretend that we've already gone through a turn one between okay. the two of us. Solid. So we're going to be starting at the top of turn two and we're going to allow you to go first. Okay. But I'm going to put models in a way where we can get into the action pretty quick. Okay. Solid. Okay. So give me just two seconds. So we have the uh, flesh and blood and the uh, the artificial intelligence. Classic match. And this is beautiful terrain. Is this the MicroArt stuff? This is the MicroArt Studio holographic walls. Uh, I believe it's two sets of them. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, and oh, one other thing that's important, facing, you can only see the front 180 degrees of your okay. model, so facing is important. Front arcs. You can put all your guys in cover. My guys didn't quite make it at the end of my last turn. Hey, that might be was, good for me, yeah. I was being a little aggressive, you know, in my movement. And this is where I ended up. At, at, remember, in, in order to count as cover, you have to be in base contact with it. Base, you have to physically be in base-to-base contact with some element. Now, now, now you'll notice that this model, for instance, the, you know, this model has extensions beyond right, the base. Right, it looks way too cool to be in Right, cover. exactly. So, well, beyond that, too, there might be times where you have to just tell your opponent, yeah. He is in base to base. I can't physically make the model. Yeah. That. It's pretty rare when sure. that happens, but it happens every once sure. in a while. Now, it, base to base, so like, what if my model is like touching this and like pretty visible still? Is he still off cover? Is there a Well, role? for instance, if you're a base to base right here, you get no cover from this guy. Sure. I, you have to, the way that cover works is that you have to have, if it's ground cover, it has to cover the model's knees. So an example here would be if this block happened to be right there. The model can see over the block, but it covers up at least his knees. He's in partial cover. He gets a, First off, I subtract three from my ballistic skill when I'm trying to fire at him. Oh, nice. And yeah. he gets a plus three to his armor save. All right, so cover is a huge deal. Cover is huge. This is the reason why you hear a lot of people talk about the amount of terrain is kind of important yes. in infinity. Yes, yes, totally. Okay, so we're going to put them back where they were. Uh, the other way to do uh, cover is vertical cover. So if I'm behind the wall, but I like I want to pop around and you know, pop off some shots. Sure. The general rule of thumb is that the model should be at least a, a third. Uh, a third of the base, a third of the model. See, that's always a good question. I'm going to I'm gonna say it should be a third of the base. That's cool. OK, that's what I thought it was, right. for sure. Uh, but generally speaking, when you're trying to target a model, like for instance, if, if this model for whatever reason, because of the way he's posed, can't, I can't gauge whether or not I can see enough of the model. I, I, can, I can request to have it replaced with a different pose of the same model type. Awesome. To okay. Turn, right. Solid. Yeah. So you can solve that issue, no problem. Absolutely. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of safety in, in, in the rule system. Um, the other thing too is that you have, uh, generally speaking, you can't target a model at all if you can't see at least a head size proportion of the model itself. Okay. And that's not causing causing the base. It's talking about the model itself. Okay. I'm I'm with you. All right. So so this is where we started. You have three guys who generate regular orders for you. And I need you to go ahead and decide what you're going to do. All right. So my thinking is, uh, I want to, I want to take an easy shot for my first thing. So I think that's a good choice. I I think I want to move this guy like around and just shoot at this guy who's exposed. That sounds seems reasonable, right? So you're going to declare that you're using an order. You've declared that this is the model that you're using the order on. I'm going to use an order on this model, yeah. You're going to eventually. He has movement four. You're not even coming close to that. So we're not going to break out the tape measure measure. for for a budge, right? So So I declare I'm spinning an order there, but I don't have to tell my opponent what I'm going to do. Well, no. Until I do it? Well, you're declared that you're moving, right? Okay. So you've declared the first short skill is a movement skill. You've moved. But you should wait to declare your second skill until I have just told you, now that I have a model that can see you, uh-huh. I need to declare my ARO, or what's called active, or sorry, automatic response order. It's been a long day. <laughs> um, so my automatic response order, or, or ARO, for this model, who is the only one who has line of sight to your model, is going to be to fire. So now you're going to you, shoot as I pop out of cover. Right. Now you would declare the second half of your order, which would be to fire back. To fire. Okay. Yeah, totally. Let's okay. let's shoot back. Excellent. And I've got I'm on the offense. I got the burst. Right. So we're going to run through this one more time. After this, 
you're going to start telling me what numbers you need. Okay, solid. Okay? Solid. So, again, you've declared, we're both declaring that we're using combi rifles. And actually, you know what? I'm going to have you tell me yours. I'm only going to tell you mine. Now, the thing is, and, and I'm not going to lie to you, I've played some Infinity before. Okay. Contrary to, to what you might think. Um, oh, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so... The, the combat, so I have a bunch of weapons on these guys. Right. So whenever I'm declaring an attack, let's say I've got a shotgun and an, like a you combat rifle. You need to declare rifle. before you measure, take measure because the plus right. and minus bands, the modifiers are different. Between so when I say I'm going to shoot back with, and I declare the weapon right there. Absolutely. Okay. It's so only because we kind of declared that it, for this demo, everyone will only be using combat sure. rifles. Yeah. But it's a good practice to say, I am firing with combat rifle. Combat rifle. All right. So I am going to fire with a combat rifle. And uh, so, what's our range on this? I think that's uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the tape measuring for you since you got your hands. Yeah, full. yeah, please do. Okay, so measuring from center, center base to, to center. center, it's about ten and a half inches. All right, so that's in my medium range. So I'm going to go plus three to my ballistic skill. Right, so your ballistic skill starts at thirteen. That's great. So it's a sixteen ballistic skill. Um, what about so? But I do have that special camouflage, right? Special which is a camo. Three. It's All right. Mimetism. So I'm back down to thirteen. Absolutely. And my burst is three, so I'm going to pick up three d20s, and I need under thirteen for successes. Exactly. Okay. In my instance. Uh, in your instance, let's see. You have so, an attack bot at eleven. Right. Firing at me, but since I'm in cover, you're. Well, first off, I get the bonus the same. Plus sure. Three range. So you go to 14, but then I'm in cover. So you go back down to 11. Absolutely right. All right. So you need 11 on one dice, and I need 13s on three dice. This is a no-brainer here. Right. Again, you would think very that. important. <laughs> and I roll a 15, so I completely whiff. I, I am. The, these are the most bipolar dice. I've got two ones and a 20. In this case, though, what, what's what's the outcome? The outcome is two successes, and you have none. Right. So had I even rolled a two. You would have taken one hit, and I would have taken nothing. Man, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> but this time, I need to roll two armor saves. Two armor Again, saves, okay. Your, the damage of your weapon is a 13. Okay. Uh, my model has no armor. That's right. But I have to exceed, so that means I need 14s on two you dice. You need two 14s. I like these odds. Uh-huh, two and I roll tens. two 10s. So I'd go from one structure to zero, effectively making my robot useless but then negative for the second hit and you know unless there's a stipulation that I should leave the model on the, on the table he's gone. he's gone okay so if I got let's say there's a three wound model and I get five wounds on him all with one giant shot from this awesome gun or something okay yeah that would be kind of bizarre but so yeah. he would go all in one shot to minus two and immediately die no chance to be healed no chance for anything if, crazy if he failed all his armor saves or you know for instance if he got hit with viral weapons and used the BTS yeah. instead of what I don't think I talked about that. BTS stands for Biotechnology Shield, and it's only used when you're being hit with viral weaponry or being hacked. And it's a little bit beyond Nasty the scope stuff. of this demo. For Nasty this stuff. Point. Yeah, for sure. All right, so hey, that was really successful. Yep. I'm happy with that outcome. So you still have two orders left. I don't know how much more you want to do with this demo, but. I mean, that seems fine. I guess my only thing is is there anything fancy that happens if I succeed in an armor check? Like, do I have to do any fancy rolls or am I just okay? So if you get hit uh -huh. and you successfully save, you would, on, on, for an average model, they'd have to take effectively a willpower check to make sure that they could stay where they're at. But in this demo, I, as a remote presence and as V Courage, I, that never has to happen. Nothing fancy, I mean, okay. The guy, the guy holding the joystick controlling these guys on some he doesn't other planet, it's like, yeah. yeah, whatever, you're not backing up. He doesn't care. You know, All right. going to stay right there. Well, Brian... You've given us a really good overview of the just the basics of this game. What is your favorite thing about Infinity? You seem like you're really passionate about it, really into it. What is it that you'd love about this game? There, honestly, there's two, and they're, they kind of are coincide. The one big thing is the arrow system. I love the fact that I'm not waiting for a person to be completed right. by this turn. Right. Uh, the second thing is that I've kind of I've been playing around, and I really haven't seen it be. It's it's not about this building like a lot of other uh, war games are. It really is about laying down strategies once your models are down on the table. And, and that's really it. What more can you say? That is what attracted us to this game at first and what... Uh, well, oh, and, and the models. Come yeah, on. yeah. And what has us super excited about it, I gotta say, man, uh, this is fantastic. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. And best of luck here and uh, on your channel and just in the Grand Infinity world, man. We'll see you around. Thank you very much.